We also need psychology because we are behave, we using human beings within this environment. So we need a lot of psychology. We need engineering, engineering principles. So can we come up with an equation or one equation, which hopefully is built some, in, in some kind of silicon, and then can create kind of the ultimate virtual environment, uh, probably in 150 years' time. I don't know. Thanks very much. That's basically what I want to say. Thanks very much. Now, if you're interested, we can take questions. One. Okay. Um, I have heard about artificial intelligence here, and yes. I've heard from other sources and books that and movies that if we develop artificial intelligence too much then it'll pose a threat to us like in the movies Terminator and I have heard from somewhere else that there are some laws for the creation of art artificial intelligence which are the laws of robotics can you yeah. explain that? So there are, I think there are two questions here is it? Right. One can question um, I'm not entirely sure about the laws of robotics, but it's probably related to the actual uncanny valley that we're talking about here. Um, as we, and in fact, the uncanny valley came because of these robots. Um, um, but, but going back to your question of um, whether, we, whether we can go to a point where you know, we don't know the difference, it's, it's very hard to say. It's, it's difficult to say what's going to happen. Obviously, human beings are going to dominate the whole thing. So. I don't think there will, there will be a point where we will actually lose control of the whole thing and the whole, I don't know, world will fall apart. I don't think that's going to happen. Any other questions? Is there a possibility that humans will become inferior to the Why would they become inferior? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. No, I don't believe that. <laughs> Could be. Could be a black swan. If you're talking about the uh, uncanny valley here, we're talking about positive human response towards technology, right? So wouldn't it be more likely that we first develop technology which doesn't appear to be human-like? Now, for example, instead of building a robot which looks like a human, we just build one which cleans the floor but doesn't look like a human at all, maybe like a comic figure. Isn't that more likely than just trying to develop things after we pass the graphical implementation of Uncanny Valley? Yes, it's probably... So the question here is, is it better to build robots which doesn't look like us? Am I right? Yes. It's um, now yes, yes. It's may, maybe 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 that's true. For for certain for certain cases, obviously, they uh, it's better to build robots that are, don't look like us. And it depends on what scenario we're building the robots. If if we want to build a robot which exactly looks like humans, then obviously the uncanny valley comes into into equation. Uh, and and the reason why I, I was focusing on uncanny valley here is because we are actually creating virtual environments where there are a lot of human interaction. So the human interaction needs to, to make sure that the human interactions are pretty realistic. So that's why the uncanny valley comes there. Okay? actually reached a point where we could feel what's happening in the virtual world. Yes, that's what we're working already. So, for example, this project that we're working with um, in uh, with Singapore Media Authority, um, we are actually developing haptics. So, in, in, in you go into this, this environment, well, you don't actually go at the moment, but you touch 
this object and you can feel whether this object is heavy or not through, through these haptic environments, yes. And that's one of the characteristics of a virtual environment where you go into this, you should be able to feel, otherwise it's not realistic. So there could be, for example, the uncanny valley is not just for, probably not just for visual, it, there could be a, 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 another uncanny valley for this, this sort of thing. So there can be more than one uncanny valley, in fact. Thank you, Will, for that presentation. It was very interesting. And the uncanny valley itself is pretty uncanny, I would say. Thank you. Um, <laughs> my question is more of um, tapping your brain on, 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 on a prediction of you know, how long it will take for, for me to sit in my room, wear a glass, and use you know, the energy I generate from my body to tap into the internet, download these uh, equations onto the glass, and, and play a game. How long would it take? You want me to tell me to how many years? Yeah. Uh, because it depends, I, I can, on, it depends okay. on how much data is being transferred. So okay, I can probably I would say another 200 years. It's my, my guess. No, let's say Arthur C. Clarke predicted that many things will, will happen in the year 2000. Nothing happened. We still, you know, I showed you that chair problem. We're still struggling to identify chairs you know, through AI. So it's not, it's not very easy to do that kind of things. So maybe, I mean, to be on the conservative side, I would say that. Um, my question is about, um, you were talking about your project with Singapore. Um, I was yeah. trying to understand, is it something like the second life? Um, no, it's more than Second Life. In the Second Life, uh, you have your the, the, the object, the geometry is really rubbish, isn't it? Right. You see. It. So. So are you improving that? There's no point even talking about Uncanny Valley in in, uh, in Second Life. Right. So we, what we're trying to do, we're trying to develop very very realistic scenarios there. Thank you, Professor. I just want to ask you about two things. Yes. The first is about privacy. You mentioned about uh, the security arrangements for the airports. Yes. So how is the Home Office going to ensure that this kind of information data does not get onto the wrong people or someone's personal profiles get abused? That's the first question. The second one is about using video evidence. After seeing what you have uh, put on screen, uh, perhaps put a... a bit of religion into it as well. We always hear that this kind of evidence cannot be accepted in the courts if you are looking at Islamic Sharia. Sure. Yeah. So how does this whole two link? Okay. First the privacy issue and then using this kind of evidence okay, in the, courts. The first question was even raised when we were actually applying for this project. People were saying, you know, you're not going to get permission to do these kind of things in real life. But what we're trying to do is science here. So I leave that to politicians to sort out really that problem. What we're trying to solve is a problem with saying, okay, this is a this is a challenging problem, let's solve it first and then let others solve it. So I don't really know the answer to that to be honest. And what was the second question again? Um, yeah. The the for this project again, what we are not trying to actually replace human beings. This is a decision aid. So when it comes to passport control, they will implement it ultimately at for example, in the UK passport control, they will implement it. But what they're trying to do, what we're trying to do, is not to replace the officer there, but to give a guidance to the officer. So this could be a guidance even to the jury, for example. It's not going to be kind of the ultimate thing. Maybe it may be in the later stage, but at this stage, what we're saying is, it's a guide that will assist human beings to make their decisions better. And then speaking of that, I was talking about, I was talking about my predictions and things, and I was talking about. So imagine there's a scenario where I can actually, or not me, or someone can uh, develop a machine that basically tells everything about yourself by just looking at your face. So maybe in two or three hundred years, people will not show their faces to the public. It's going to be so scary, isn't it? You, talk, you, can, you can tell everything about this person by just simply looking at their face. So there's lots of issues there, you know. But we, we, we don't tend to not to worry about those. We tend to, you know, find 
find these problems and try to find solutions to those 